Hi, this is Vernon Neely, and you're watching Tus Clases de Guitarra. Bienvenidos a un nuevo video para Tus Clases de Guitarra. Este es un video muy especial. En este caso estoy con un gran guitarrista estadounidense. Ha editado muchísimos álbums eh, exitosos, junto con otros grandes guitarristas como eh, Greg Howe, Frank Gambale, eh, Kiko Loureiro y Slash. Y bueno, en este caso está aquí con, en tus clases de guitarra para tener una entrevista pequeña y luego va a estar eh, tocando algunas canciones y enseñando algunas de sus técnicas para ustedes. El señor Vernon Neely. ¿Cómo andas, Vernon? Ah, I'm good. <laughs> Thank Gracias. You. Ah, no. Gracias por estar. ¿eh? Pleasure is mine. Uno, uno no. Uh, honor mine too. Vernon se está presentando aquí en Argentina, eh, así que te quiero preguntar cómo te fue en este último show eh, aquí. No, the shows were excellent, excellent. Uh, it was the first time that uh, uh, I had the opportunity to perform the songs for the new uh, CD that's getting ready to be released next uh, next month. Next month. Yes. Yeah, the so name of the. It's out of time, out of time, and so it uh, was really, really good. I had the opportunity to perform these songs and to see the reaction to from the a live audience. Mm -hmm. So it was really good. Tu próximo disco es Out of Time. Eh, vas a contar con invitados también eh, y bueno y a ver si puedes adelantar un poco las canciones de qué se trata. Mm -hmm. uh, Out of Time uh, is an album or CD that I've been working on for three years now, and it's because of the other artists that I wanted to be on the album, so trying to coordinate everybody's schedules. So it's taken a while, but I'm happy with the results. So uh, I've invited uh, guests like uh, Greg Howe, who's a phenomenal guitarist. Mm -hmm. He's played with, of course, uh, Michael Jackson and Justin Timberlake and Enrique Iglesias. Um, Rihanna, mm -hmm. and uh, those are just some of the uh, credits that he has. So he's one of the guests. Kiko Guerrero, who's a very, very old friend of mine, and um, from Angra. Uh, from Angra, Angra, yes. And so um, I distribute Kiko's music in the United States, mm -hmm. and so we have a long uh, relationship together. I first met him in Brazil. Uh, doing some clinics there, some uh, shows there, and so we teamed up. But anyway, so probably as everybody knows, Kiko now is the new guitarist with uh, Megadeth, mm -hmm. and, and so he's on the, the CD. Other guitarists are a good friend of mine for many, many years, uh, Victor Johnson, who plays with Sammy Hagar, and also Frank Gambale, who's mm -hmm. another friend, is, 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 is playing as well. A good friend of mine from Sweden, his name is Matthias Eklund, okay. and he's also playing on the CD. The bassist, uh, Juan Nelson from Ben Harper and the Innocent Criminals, uh, Philip Bino, uh, Steve Vai's bass mm -hmm. player, uh, T.M. Stevens is on there, and another very, very good friend of mine, uh, Charles Glenn, who played Uh, with Little Richard for 25 years, so he's he's playing a song on there, and um, uh, so there's many invited artists. Jennifer Batten is is as well uh, there, uh, and so uh, drummers uh, uh, Eric Valentine from Steve Lukather's band mm -hmm. is is there, and uh, Kuka Teixeira, who's a phenomenal drummer from Brazil. Is, is also uh, playing on. So uh, many, many guests, uh, musicians from a very, very high level. Yeah. For me, it's an honor because uh, when you think of these uh, artists or uh, uh, musicians, they're some of the world's best musicians mm -hmm. and uh, they themselves have played with legends in, in the music business. So. It's an honor, and each time for me, it's a, it's a uh, it's a privilege, um, learning experience too for me, because everybody has their own uh, way of playing their technique, and so yeah. it, it, um, 
As we're doing the recordings, it gives me a chance to learn from them as well. ¿Cómo se hace para trabajar con tantos eh, artistas grandes y coordinar ese trabajo para poder lanzar un álbum? Uh, what I generally do because they live in different parts of the world and and so uh, they record. Uh, uh, I'll send them the track mm -hmm. to record. They will send the track back to me and so I will mix the the tracks and uh, and that's how it usually work. Very cool. Mm -hmm. ¿A qué edad comenzaste a tocar guitarra y por qué? ¿Qué fue lo que te impulsó uh -huh. a querer tocar guitarra, a querer dedicarte a la música? Mm -hmm. I started uh, playing the guitar really first because of my love for the Beatles. Mm. Um, I remember the early movies from the Beatles and just watching them play their songs with the Rickenbacker guitars that they had and uh, it looked like they were having a lot of fun. So I said, oh, cool, I want to do that. And so it first started with that, but then uh, when I was 14 years old, a cousin of mine introduced me to the music of Jimi Hendrix. Wow. And that was not only a music changing experience, but a life changing experience for me at 14 years old. Mm -hmm. and It was because uh, the first time I listened to his music, uh, his first record was called Are You Experienced? Mm -hmm. And so the sounds of the music were just so different than anything mm -hmm. that was being recorded at that time. And so I really liked the sound of his playing, his, his, uh, his songs, mm -hmm. and So I started to get more and more into Jimi Hendrix, but also for me with Jimi Hendrix wasn't just the music, it was his whole persona, the way that he looked, the way that he dressed. I mean, he was just a completely different individual. And, and at the first that guitar hero. Yes, yes, a true guitar hero, mm -hmm. the first really true guitar hero. And it was, for that period of time, it was very, very phenomenal for somebody like him to be accepted um, across nationalities, borders. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so this was very, very influential for me. ¿Aprendiste solo, sos autodidacta, o tuviste maestros de guitarra? Mm -hmm. I started taking music lessons Uh, with my mother, actually. Uh, she's a pianist, concert pianist, mm -hmm. and also violinist. So um, I took lessons uh, for piano first. Uh, that was my first instrument, mm -hmm. playing piano. And so from playing piano, I learned how to read music. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I took theory in school, uh, music theory. And so uh, what I did was just take that information and transfer it to the guitar. So as far as taking guitar lessons, no. I've just applied what I learned from piano mm -hmm. and applied it to, to the guitar. Hablaste de Jimi Hendrix, the Beatles. ¿Qué otras influencias mm -hmm. uh, tuviste? One of my other biggest influences is uh, Carlos Santana. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I love the music of Carlos Santana and when I was 14 years old I started playing in, uh, in a band that we used to play in schools and things like this and a lot of the music that we played was uh, Santana music from his first, uh, first uh, recording and um, so Santana definitely is, is one of my biggest influences on, on guitar and that is really where you know doing things like thrills because Santana and, and so uh, yeah he's just a great very big very <laughs> in, in, influence on me then as as I started to get older you know I started listening to people like Jeff Beck mm. and uh, jazz guitarists because my uh, I guess my um, ex my growth I was growing musically uh -huh. and so I started listening to people like uh, Uh, George Benson, mm -hmm. uh, when the group 
Return to Forever came out with Chick Corea and Al Demiola, Stanley Clark, Lenny White, you know, um, progressive jazz fusion. Mm -hmm. I, I listened to a lot of, of that type of music and um, then the 80s came and uh, of course Eddie Van Halen has mm -hmm. influenced the whole world uh, of guitar so I, I really like uh, his, his, his style of playing and, um, and you know doing finger uh, aggressive yeah. style. Yeah, and, and, and open too. Eddie is a very, very open guitar player. Aggressive but open. And when, it, when I say open, he uses a lot of open chords and, and you know, he'll play something like with, with, with a B, an open B, and with the, with the B, stuff like that, and, and it's different, I mean, mm. you, you know, so. Uh, influenced from him as, as, as well, but there's so many uh, great guitar players these days. Uh, um, like I mentioned, Greg Howe, he, he's a phenomenal guitar player and he has his own style. That's the thing that I, I really, really like about him. It's a, it's a mix of jazz, uh, fusion, and R&B kind of because of his feeling uh, on, the, on the guitar. and. Um, so I really like him a lot as, as, as well. Uh, Steve Vai is very, very technical, you know. Uh, I think uh, he was probably, for technique, you know, uh, a great influence because he has mastered technique mm -hmm. uh, on, on the guitar. And so a lot of influence over the years, probably for the 70s, uh, because uh, unfortunately Jimmy died early in the 70s. Uh, so although his music, his last albums that he recorded, like Cry of Love, and uh, these albums uh, came out uh, right at the time, a little bit after he died. And, and so still, great, great influences in the 70s. So in the 70s, of course, you had uh, you know, the bands like Led Zeppelin, and, and I like those bands too, uh, um, and the guitar players uh, during, during that time, Jimmy Page, uh, um, uh, Tommy, uh, of, of course, yeah. and, and you know, many, many guitar players. Jeff Beck was, was starting to do his solo stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, his Blow by Blow album was, was incredible, and uh, sometimes when I play live, I, I play some of the things from his, his, his big influence, uh, big influence. And so 80s, as the 80s came, once again, uh, Eddie Van Halen, Steve Vai, um, uh, they, they were the main ones. I mean, there were, were other guys during that time. And, and, but also, on, uh, because I don't want to forget this too, the, the blues players, because I've played with uh, many great blues players, legends in the blues, and, and so the blues has been uh, a uh, big influence on, on my music too. Um, having the opportunity to play with individuals like Johnny Guitar Watson and uh, um, Pee Wee Creighton, who's another famous blues player in the United States. Uh, um, when you're able to be around those people, you learn, and, and so, uh, blues has been very, very influential for me too. And the, the blues, um, I, and I don't know if this is understood here in Argentina, but I'll just share this because um, it's important. All forms of modern music in the United States, whether it's R&B or rock, uh, jazz, um, all started from blues music. Mm -hmm. That was the foundation. So it's very, very important as a guitar player to really get some of that. Mm -hmm. Nombramos guitarristas de los 60, 70, 80. ¿Cómo ves la música o el rock o el jazz, la fusión de hoy en día? ¿Cómo, cómo ves, cómo está la escena? Well, I, I never like to talk uh, negatively about anything. So I'll just say that the music today is very, very different than before. I think that at, at times past, there was more, or I should say there was better songwriting, songwriting because those songs from that era, they still play now. Mm -hmm. And so that says something, you know, that a song will live 30, 
25 years, so the writing was a lot different at that time and to me a lot better. So, yeah. Eh, bueno, y para finalizar, sí. ¿qué le aconsejas a alguien que puede estar mirando en este momento y que quiere comenzar a aprender guitarra y dedicarse uh -huh. a la música uh -huh. eh, como profesional? Sí, 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 sí. Uh, I think it is very, very important to, at the very, very beginning of trying to play guitar, to get lessons and, and because you have a lesson channel mm -hmm. and uh, video on YouTube is so uh, there's so many videos on, on so take lessons so that you can understand but also watch many many videos mm -hmm. uh, uh, like you have on your channel because there's videos of all of the famous players on mm -hmm. video now this is something that we didn't have when yeah. uh, which <laughs> I can only imagine how much better I would play guitar <laughs> now if, if I had that. But um, yes, yeah, so study because that's important. It's important to understand what you're doing. It opens up um, uh, creativity mm -hmm. for you to understand your instrument, what you can do. And also because the guitar, uh, um, it has its limitations too. So then you think about the limitations of it and so then you work with, you learn how to work with what you have and do the most of it with what you have. So uh, uh, studying, practicing, practicing is, is very, very important. Uh, uh, learning is repetition. So the more that you do something, the more uh, easy it's going to become to do. So practice. Practice, practice. It's very important to practice, practice, practice. And so, um, um, so, uh, and then one thing that is very, very important during this time period in which we are living now in the mu in music, it's not just playing and being creative, but it's understanding and knowing the business of music because. Nowadays, the opportunities for young musicians to grow and become a professional are becoming more limited, more limited, more limited. And so, by understanding the music business, the business aspect of the business, then you understand how to market your music, how to promote your music, how to go on social media and, and advertise your music and so this aspect has become very very important during this 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 period that we're uh, in right now so uh, as important as it is to learn how to play it's just that much important to learn the business of music so that nobody robs you or cheats you well Vernon muchísimas gracias por estar acá ah. un placer tenerte on, on y bueno, a ustedes les dejo eh, todos los links de los sitios de Vernon, sus álbums y bueno, todas eh, sus redes sociales lo pueden ver eh, aquí en la descripción del video. Y bueno, los veo entonces en el próximo tutorial. Si te gustó el video, dale like. Si querés aprender alguna canción, déjame tu comentario y suscríbete a mi canal.